네, 그래서 코딩 뭐하러 하지? 싶을 정도로 거의 이게 다 되었어요. 그래서 일단 요거를 잠깐 해본 다음에 그리고 하나가 더 있는데 이거 그래서 여러분 그 자기 컴퓨터 쓸 사람은 이게 이름이 알두이노 스크래치거든요. 그거 알두이노 So uh, you can just download. You can so uh, Google search with keywords Arduino on Scratch, and then uh, that one is uh, this one. The name is Arduino Scratch.org, and then, so you can actually install this one. So just download the file. Uh, the program is probably here. Program. Update. Oh, right, here. If you go to home, just download download three point. Ah, there's actually a newer version. Download three point seven. Uh, please download and install it. And actually, there's another one, another really nice one. Is this one? Free chain. Free chain. Ah, free chain. There are a lot of Arduino simulator. Uh, uh, Tinkercad is another really good one. So let's see the Tinkercad. Then you need to locate this one, Tinkercad. Um, Uh, actually, Tinkercad has many different versions. Among them, uh, we are going to use a uh, circuit uh, called block. So we are going to use a uh, circuit, and then you just can make a new one. And then you can just bring Arduino here. And then you can bring, uh, let's say, Probably let's just bring LED. But there's a, actually even simpler LED, I guess. So I, I'll cover both of them. And then this one is quite, I have to say, quite amazing. Even this one, uh, so here's <laughs> this one is really amazing. For example, let's say that this one is LED and this one is negative, negative goes ground. And then Positive goes to plus, and let's change the color. This one, negative, supposed to be black. So now this one is connecting Arduino and LED. And then here's um, code, and this one is block code, as you see there. And just I just delete. So basically, what I said is continuous unlimited, and is this one. Basic LED high, wait one second, LED low. And then if you start simulation, start, it will blink. So this one is even you don't, you don't really need Arduino at all. And then uh, if you click, there is a rock. Uh, okay. Uh, and then if you change to text, yeah, I'll just do, uh, I will select block and you can see the code. So what it means is, so this one is simply translation of this block coding. So what it says is, so you can, if you want to use real Arduino, you can simply copy and paste to your Arduino and it will run exactly the same as this. So let's use this one. <laughs> Arduino's on, on. So that's kind of so okay. Um, I know I bought this. Time. Okay, so it's kind of. Uh, but the one another bad thing is uh, 
But with Tinkercad, we don't really see Arduino's work as the best thing. So we are going to use Arduino on Scratch. But this one is so far a little bit tricky, I have to say. Okay, so. Uh, Did you install it? I didn't understand. Okay, so you have it. Okay, so I will just turn it on and then let's just start it together. Uh, so let's say you will have Arduino Scratch on here. So this is the icon. So we have Arduino is here. So let's say that and then now connect your Arduino to your laptop. Uh, a couple of things I need to explain. So Arduino is not really uh, iPhone or your smartphone or love that or notebook level quality. So it's just kind of made by many Chinese company. And it is also made by startup company. Even the original one is done by small company in Italy. And then it is highly probable that the actual product that you're going to use is probably Chinese imitation. So I will just kind of like explain what they are first. Uh, so let's kind of check what it is. So uh, I have to explain that. So in many cases, even if you buy a new one, it is also highly probable that your Arduino may are maybe broken one or damaged one. It's really rare. It is really common that you have a damaged version, even if it is new. So you need to check whether this device is walkable or healthy. So first thing, what you're going to check when you connect it to your notebook, uh, you need to check this green button is on. And simply, what does that mean by this green button is on? Is simply saying that in this Arduino, So Arduino has three components. So first part is this Arduino microcontroller. And this microcontroller pin is are connected to this female pin. That's it. So this one is just simply physically uh, make it easy for any users to simply connect to this pin so without the PCB uh, board. And then if you see that here, so from this left one, this USB part and this little black one. So historically, Arduino uses um, serial communication. What serial communication is simply this. So simply a uh, serial communication is simply using two wires. And then one is ground and the, the other is signal. So it's just simply on and off. That's a serial communication. So you need actually two ways serial communication. One to send the signal and the other one to receive signal. But you can share the ground. So making a two ways communication only requires three lines like this. However, so, and then what, what else do you need is at the beginning of your signal, you need to reset the communication. So you need to reset. And then I don't know whether you heard it, M-I-S-O or M-O-S-I-E. What does that mean is that, so M-I-S-O and M-O-S-I. So what, if you grab a notebook at the Arduino, so you need, to make a serial communication, you need this uh, six connection, which SCK is actually kind of resetting the signal. And then MOSI means master out signal in. MISO means master in signal out. Simply one used for sending signal, the other one receive signal. And then, uh, and then, uh, so you need MISO, MI, MOSI, MISO, and then one for reset, and two for power and ground, and there's probably one more. So you need total six pin connections. 
to use Arduino secret communication. That's this six. Oh, actually, it has to be it is not shown here. But you check your Arduino. So that is that six connection using all the style communication is this one. If you look at Arduino's image, let's see the something you want. So do you see the six pins here and another six here? So this one is actually pins set for all the style communication. So this is called the serial communication. However, uh, whether you remember it or not, all the laptops have six uh, ports for serial communication. It looks like this. Uh, that Computer, uh, severe, communication. So all the style actually computers have this kind of connection on every board like this. But no like no recent laptops do not have this one because they all use USB. So what happened here is we need to translate serial communication to a USB device. So that is this little black one is the microcontroller chip that is dedicated to translate serial communication to USB. And then, so this, there are actually, Arduino has two microcontrollers. One is the main one that you are going to use as a microcontroller. Another microcontroller is this simply communication microcontroller. And there are actually several different types of serial communication. So as you see, what you see is like this uh, square one. And another type of communication chip is actually this one. And this one is actually way much cheaper than this square one. So many Chinese imitation version uses this kind of communication chip. But in this case, you need to install a communication driver for your laptop. So what happened is that if you buy this kind of Arduino, this one is actually imitation, you probably see the green light. But after you connect it, if you find your Arduino device on your computer, you cannot find it because the communication drive is different. So in that, so simply in that case, you have long one, just Google search, <laughs> and I need the Arduino driver, uh, Arduino USB driver, then you need to install some drivers. Okay. But so far we are using this one. So again, and then another third part, third one is actually this lower one. And then this one is basically power supply for your microcontroller. And then this one is sub uh, voltage adapter. You can use it like a five volt to 20 volt. And then this little device is known as voltage regulator. What does that mean is whatever input voltage is higher than certain one, this voltage regulator change lower the voltage to five volt. Actually it changed to six volt. And then it just supply the six, the lower voltage to microcontroller by passing this to capacitor. And capacitors are basically you can think of it as rechargeable battery. What it means is that any overflow from the input device can be saved to this capacitor, and then it offer to be microcontroller very stable electricity. So as you, so now you understand that this Arduino is a package of three components main microcontroller, second microcontroller to communicate from serial communication to USB communication, and the third one is actually power control device. And probably if it can move fast, next week we'll build our own Arduino. 
So there are actually real only in this way. Okay. So, and then uh, when you uh, handle this uh, Arduino, uh, you need uh, to understand three different key knowledge. One is micro microcontroller can handle input signal and also output signal. And then you need to learn how to connect input and output signals together. And then input signals, you have two types of input signals. One is analog signal and this is it. And then also at the same way, in the same way, output signal have two types of signals. Input signal and output signal. And then, on, and then what does that mean by analog signal and input signal? You can think of it as distance signal as DC and then analog signal as AC. However, something different is that when, it, when, it, when I mean by distance signal means zero and five volts. So if it is five volts, it could be understood as high or two. If it is zero volts, it could be understood as zero or four. But actually, it's not really true. So actually, there is a kind of voltage sensor inside of this microcontroller. If a voltage is higher than certain mid range, such as 2.5 or 3 volts, if a voltage is higher than the mid range, it understands the voltage is high. And if the voltage is lower than the mid saturation point, then it will understand 0 or 4. If the same thing goes to analog input, uh, Distal input and distal output. So distal output means this microcontroller will send five volts current or voltage. If it is zero or four, it will just simply send zero volts. So you probably understand it's kind of easy to understand the input and output. So input five volts, one or two, zero volts, force or zero. When it goes out, five volts, two or high. It's low or zero. So it's easy. And that's basically the electric switch. And that's what does the beautiful thing about semiconductor is that it will control the voltage very easily. That's why it's semi that online switch you can semi control the voltage input and output. Analog input and output is a little bit trickier. So it needs a special device that's inside of it. So for analog input, it requires analog to digital controller, which is known as ADC. So what it means is that even if, so let's imagine that uh, 2.5 volts is coming here. It needs to understand, and actually whatever inside this microcontroller, it's all digital. So something comes in is analog, which is somewhere a voltage between zero and five volts. There's a special sensor called ADC that converts, it reads the voltage of input and it converts it to digital signal. So that's why it's called ADC. So what it means is ADC is only, is the, this special device is only installed between A0 to A5. So it, this microcontroller has only six ABC controller, meaning that it can it can use it, it can actually use it, it can use six sensors. And then these six sensors, what it means by is that uh, there's a long story here. So kind of this is explain how this internal works. But if I long story simple, it will convert to analog voltage of five volts into this third value, the result will be 1023. So five volts is 1023, zero volts is zero. And then somewhere between, will be somewhere between zero and five volts will be transposed into zero to 1024. So that's what ADC is doing. And so that's kind of how the central sensor works. And then, when we talk about analog output, it also needs a special device called PWM. PWM is actually kind 
kind of work reversely if there's a a to analog to digital converter, this will convert the digital to analog converter. So PW, what does PWF do? If this device want to, so this is a different. So actually, PWF is actually, uh, I have to explain this something visually. So you want to shoot out five volts and somewhere in the middle, not just totally and looks like analogously. How does it work this? If you turn on the light, it's on. If you turn it off, it's off. But imagine that you can actually turn it off and on very fast. So actually, as I don't know whether you know, your eye can only react to maximum. 120 hertz, meaning that something is faster than 120 times per second, your eye cannot really distinguish that is your sensitivity of your eye is 120. And actually, it's generally 60 is also good. And even many human eyes can only sense, even if something is faster than 30 seconds. 30 times per second, people think it is animation. So that's how old movie is generated. They make a film that film that has 30 prime frames per second, we think it as animation. What they mean by it is our brain cannot distinguish that this one is a still image that has changed, or this one is moving images, our eyes cannot really distinguish. So to use that our eyes lower sensitivity, what this PWM do is, if we kind of like switch very fast, then actually we think, that, oh, that's brighter. If we kind of switch very slowly, we think it is very dark. Even if there's a kind of flickering is existing here, so our eyes are not really detected. The difference is, if you actually film them, the monitor with your cell phone camera, you will see some kind of clicking here because that is detected on your camera sensor. But when you see your eyes, you don't see any clicking. However, this screen is some kind of like 60 frames per second, kind of 60 times flickering per second. And our eyes can be 60. So, analog input, we have six. ABC controller. So we need that we can use extra sensor. However, the range is zero between zero and 1024. For PWM output, unlike to this ABC, PWM's output value is zero to 255, meaning that one quarter lower than input. So the value for five volt, when it is output, we are going to use 255. But when you read a sensor five volt, the value will be 10 to four. So how do we map or how do we transpose the same five volt from input to the output. We have to divide this number two, divide the number, input number by four. But however, you get the tons double over which is that But that is relatively easier method. What if what kind of mathematical formula do you need when we map? Zero input to 255, 1024 to zero. Uh, reverse math. What kind of mathematics do you know? Jack, let me do it. 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 Let me 
primarily common to the smartest students can go. But if I told you, what would be the mathematical formula to convert the reverse to 1024 to, 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 to 0? 0 to 2 to 5. Oh, 그럼구나. 천식당 어떻게 해? 천식당을 영어로 배우고 싶어요. 사로 나타나면 이게 뭐지? 아, 그럼 되게 웃겨. 익스파이트. 오, 파이, 파이, 엔, 파이, 스루트 제가? 그럼 백이라는데? 그러면 영은 나는 이상으로 여기다. 0이 255로 대피하면 플러스 해야 될 때. 0이 255로 가고 1024가 0으로 가야 맞아요. 맞아요. 오케이. So, you only need to know these three things. So, this is how you put this set up, and how we put them on the output, and how to map these four different things. That's all we need to know. And let's just go, go through very quickly. So, uh, so let's do it this way. So let's say that, um, so this is Arduino on Scratch. If you ever have the icon in, on your desktop, so Arduino on Scratch icon, so let's try it on. If you don't have it, just Google search Arduino Scratch. You can just find out uh, Arduino, interestingly, Arduino on Scratch. Interestingly, actually, this application is developed by one Korean university. And I found that this is one of the best ones to find. It works very well. One really, really minor bad side of it is that the connection is sometimes unstable, but other than that, you can just refresh the connection. That's it. Other than that, I, so far, I found that this is one of the best ones. So let's turn it on Arduino. And then this one is written in Korean, but you can change language setting by using this circle icon, and then you can change it to English, or actually even there's a Chinese version. I don't know what this first one is probably Mandarin? Uh, simplified. Simplified, and this one is com the complete form. So this is how probably Chinese is in Korea. <laughs> okay, so let's switch to English. Okay, so first thing you have to do is first we have to connect Arduino to your laptop. And let's check the green button is on. So you connect. Uh, uh, it, it's supposed to be CDT. Uh, let's do that. I don't know. You go there. Yeah, you can be an instant. This one is actually a chip that uses one of the letters used on another one. You can move your own chip is in a driver and a closer chip there. And the first thing, okay, you have to check is that uh, check the power controller is healthy. The only way to check is that you see the green light. The green light simply means the all power supply is working. That's it. That's only it says. Yeah, the rest is fine. Yeah. And then second thing is that you need to check the communication microcontroller is healthy or not. And the best way to check this one is working or not is that you're using Arduino IDC. So I will open just Arduino. So this is the Arduino app. If you don't have it, you can just download it from Arduino.cc website. 
So if you just simply, you can go to Arduino.cc. And if you go to a software, you can download it. And when you download it, uh, you can donate some money or you can just simply just download and then you can start install. It. And then if you have, if you open up your Arduino, uh, just open Arduino and then simply open, go to file and examples and go to basics and open blink. This one, what this one will do is just, this one simply blink the LED is on your Arduino. This is called a built-in LED, which is this orange one. So if you open it, once you open it, what you have to do is Arduino has a lot of variants, meaning that it has a lot of different hardware, depending on its size or depending on its functionalities. Some uses Bluetooth, some uses Wi-Fi, some uses GPS. So actually, depending on its functionality, there are tons of variations. So what you are going to use is if you go to tools and then make sure that you are going to use Arduino Uno, depending depend on the Arduino model itself, uh, the drivers are to you need to change this uh, hardware part and then make sure that uh, this port is some uh, is com6 and this one is the easiest to software to find which port your Arduino uses and then if I unplug it and then once I unplug it and then I turn on this tool, you probably see that Arduino consensus is here. So once I connect it, then you probably see that, oh, which port that my Arduino is using is this COM6 and make sure that this one is checked. So if these two settings are ready, the first one, you are using Arduino board Uno. Second thing, COM6. This number will be changed or different depending on your computer. And then COM6 is set, and then you and then just click this button. It's known as upload. And then if you click it, if you see below, it is uploading and then done uploading. And then what you need to see is actually this orange LED is actually blinking. And meaning that this both communication microcontroller and main microcontroller both are working fine. So if you actually have a problem with this uh, by communication chip, you probably see something error will be here. So by doing so, you can distinguish whether your communication microcontroller is healthy or not. If something problem with Arduino, uploading will be fine. So you will, you will not see any error. Then you will see done uploading. However, your LED will not work. So make sure that Arduino has three components. Power, communication, main microcontroller. And then you need to know which one is broken. So depending on the situation, uh, the reason why I want you to know where your problem will have because I do know you can simply be placed to another brand new Arduino. However, next week, what we are going to do is we are going to design and develop our own Arduino. And in that case, you need to know which one has a problem. So you can replace the required parts only. So so far, this is the pro process to check that your Arduino is healthy or not. But I strongly recommend whenever you start your project to do this. Otherwise, you spend two hours without really knowing one of the three components is broken, and then you just waste your three hours. Okay, you will 항상 하고 하세요. 그리고 안 하면 
어왜안 되지? 근데 결국은 알지 못했어요. 여러분 세 시간, 3 hours in your daily life. 자 이제 됐어요. Okay, so now we know that everything is okay. And coming back to this uh, Arduino and Scratch, and then again, this board is Arduino Uno is selected. Uh, one bad side of this Arduino and Scratch is that it only supports Uno and Nano. And on Nano, only Mega 3 to 80 chipsets. And actually, Arduino Uno and Nano his, uh, historically has both Mega 116 and 3 to 80 chipsets. So it's, it's, it looks the same, but a little smaller from there. So Uno is selected. And then please connect this Arduino Uno. Then it will say Arduino is connected. So once Arduino is connected, please upgrade. Oh, okay, so first thing I will do is I will install Arduino driver. If you install it first time, meaning that uh, this Arduino uses a very special driver to communicate with Arduino. So what I will do, I will do install a driver first. So this one is installing a driver in your computer that control Arduino. After that, I would connect to Arduino. So I will just connect again and done. And then I will upgrade the firmware. A firmware is a software that is installed on a microcontroller. So it's a program works inside microcontroller and it continuously communicate with this software. This, so this one is so far a preparation to use Arduino with Arduino Scratch. And then always check this one, this kind of message here, even if you change it to English, let's just kind of change it to English. So let's say that if I connect it. Okay, so Ishan, if it is written in Korean language, meaning that it is connected. If it is say something Chinese, meaning that it is not connected. So if it is, so when you use this Arduino Scratch, always check this one that Arduino is connected. So what? So what? In Ishan, you have to see that this one is something that's in Korean that it is okay. So first we need to. I have a Google circuit, so let's say install our Google driver first. It's Korean, they mean to disconnect it and I have a great formula. So now to your room. Error to be can now. Uh, how interestingly, uh, you can you don't really need to write any code from now. You can this one can do almost everything. Okay, so let's kind of do something very easy one. So go to control. Okay, go to event, and then this is the kind of initiator when green flag is clicked, and green flag is actually this green flag. And then go to controller, then I will repeat forever. And then go to Arduino, and what I will do is I will read, I will set this third pin not nine, I will use 13 and I'll put as high and I'll put high means five volts. So we will shoot out five volts to 13. And then I would go to control. I would wait one second, go back to Arduino and set this third pin 13. And then as low 
and then go back to control again and wait one second here. But since we already know that this one is our sample code, I changed this one 0 0.5 second, and then also this one as 0 0.5 second, and see once green button is flagged, and you see that the boundary is kind of highlighted. However, as you see that this connect is disappeared. So I would reconnect. And then green flag. Then, then now I see that my LED is kind of blink a little bit faster than before. And then once you do that, if you see if you're packaged, you probably see this LED strip. So instead of using LED first, we are going to use LED strip. And this LED strip, if you kind of see where the solder part, you probably cannot see easily. If you go a little bit move up, you probably see which side is plus or which side is minus. Connect plus side to pin 13. And then connect minus side either any ground. And then you probably see this. So this one is done, right? So it's very easy. And then tattoo on it. So okay, so now. Let's switch to analog. So I just drag out everything and then throw go to Arduino and set, uh, set PW pin to five output. And then I will add control and wait one second, but I'll change this one as 0 0.01. What it means is that actually Arduino can run 60 megahertz. It is so fast. So I kind of just slow down the processing speed. And then here I will set pin five. And then you what you have to do is you have to change from pin 13, you have to change this pin to pin five. And actually, you can use any PW and pin if you have only six. And then now I have you have zero. Please change this value to 50 or 100 or 150. And then you probably see that the light value is kind of dimming, meaning that you're you are using high uh, uh, analog output instead of this term. And then if you are smart, you can use this. So what, what I will do, uh, I will just you repeat 110, I change it to 255 and set PW in PN5 as, uh, actually I just want to create a variable. Uh, variable, Arduino. Variable is event control. Let's write this. A data and block. I want to make a variable. Uh, let's call it this one is right and okay. So now I create a right. And then here, instead of 150, I'll use the value right. <laughs> And then I would add change right by one means that it will add one at a time. And then before we start, we have to set right as zero. This one is simply declaring a variable. So at the beginning, the bright value will set to zero. And then at first time, it will be zero. However, it will repeat increasing its number and then it will repeat it will increase until 255 times and then i will do the same thing so repeat another 
255 times, and then again, set PWM sin 5 as go to data, bright value. But here I would set that the bright as 255. But actually, this is not really necessary because at the end of this iteration, the value will be 255. So this one is optional, but I just kind of showing that. And then here, oh, not outside. I would also change this bright, but by not one, minus one, I'll decrease it. And then I will use weight. 0 0.01 second. So if you actually run this code, you probably see the dimming LED. So I would do next ground and connect it to five. So you probably, you also yours is supposed to be dimming. <clears throat> so analog digital was analog output relatively easy. So to check if your LED is working or not, just simply connect it to five volt and ground. Then you can check if your LED is working. So LED is working. Now you are doing the distal. So pin 13 and ground. Pin 13 is very, very clear. I will double check everything is okay. Then I upgrade from here. So it just if you have a problem, just go through the whole process. The teaming is off, so you're okay with the teaming, right? <clears throat> that looks like it's working. So we finished Arduino digital output and analog output. So let's just try to use digital input. So digital input to use that. So again, I also use repeat forever. So for digital input, you can use any digital bit. So I would simply use read, I would use digital pin, whatever number. So this will be, become a variable. So you two use this digital pin. I would use digital pin 13, but this output is not really high or low. I would use this digital with pin nine. So if this pin nine is high, the pin certain will on. If the distance pin nine is low or false or zero, it will be up. However, again, it will be it will run too fast. So I just gonna slow down 0 0.01. So we will so this will what this will happen is this one's kind of directly affected. If Digital pin 9 is high, digital input 13 is high. If 9 is low and 13 is low, this one is kind of almost direct mapping. And to use that, so I connect 13 and ground, which we used before. Since we don't have a button switch, I'll use a simplified way. Which is grab a cable. I'll connect 
So now I change to thirteen and ground. And now I connect this one to P nine. And then if you connect this one to five volts here, you will offer five volts to the P nine. If you connect this black cable to ground, you will offer zero volts. Let me just see that. Let me just see that. So, uh, this token 13.9, just one more second. So, we could press green button. This green button is highlighted. In this case, um, double check. Um, actually, this one plus is orange, and yellow is minus. So, it's okay. 13. Would you upload the firmware one more time? Let us go to here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it doesn't work, so I will do now upgrade from where wait a little bit. Thirteen and three is thirteen nine. Okay, so I just read for the driver. <clears throat> so this is one of the kind of bad side because connection is very different. Thirteen disturbed Read the description. Nine. Thank you. Ah. Ike. Ah, you go into it. Ah, you go, you go into it. Ah, 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 you go 요거 보면 요거 살짝 갖다 대면 밸류가 오른쪽 누르고 왼쪽 누르고 있으면 네, 요거 하면 요거 혹시 갖다 대면 클릭하면 1 뜨는 거 보여요? 왜 그러냐면 제가 5볼 so I connected 5 volt so the value is 1 if I connect to ground, you're 
So what it means is that the coming value is one and zero. When I connect to ground, it will be zero. When I connect to fiber, it will be one. But the value it requires high or low. So we have to convert if it is one, we have to set it high. If it is zero, we have to set it low. To change that, we can use this way. So go to control if and operators. And then we have to create a variable. Let's say that nine. If it is one, if this is one, go to operators. If read the display value pin is one, I just type here one. Then if this one, I put this one, then I said, I need to add another, okay, I just said right. I just said right to high. And then here I just use right. Then I put this one in front of it. And else, oh, actually I would rather use else instead of using if. If visitor pin is one, I set right to high. Otherwise, set right to low. And it will connect to inside of it. So if it is one, let's just check. I just recon I just turn it off and be connected. So as you see that now, if it is connected to five, it is on. If I connect to ground, it is off. So simply this is another matching. Ah, 이유가 뭐냐면 그 read so uh, the previous one didn't really work because read the visitor pin the output value is one or zero. However, visitor pin thirteen is set high or low. So we have to convert when the input is one, we set right as high, else we set to low. So that's kind of we need another convert. This kind of another map. But that's the thing. So this one is kind of explaining how to connect distant input to distant output. But just careful about that. What is the data type of the input value? To check about the data value of it, I just click it and wait a little bit. Or ah, double click it. If you double click it, it will show the value, input value. So now it is zero, that's why it is turned off. But I think it does not really work. So you check the value of input value by isolating one. And then if I connect by volt, then it will offer the value, I just double click it one more time. I click the flag, so it's on. And the value is one. I get the, it will say some high down low or slow. So I can display it one source. One and then I have. There's a one in a high of a photo, zero in a low of a folder. So now we learn most of them. However, 
Now let's see that now let's use analog value. So now I'll just use forever. And then if you go to Arduino, read analog pin zero. I just kind of isolate it here. And I just use, uh, okay, so, so okay. let's use the, the simply, I just kind of read analog value here. If I double click this, the value is 319. When I didn't connect anything, what does that mean? Some on, on kind of unstable voltage is actually connected. So actually it reads some voltage in the air. If I connect A0 to ground, the value is supposed to be zero. I'll just read over here. Now it's zero because I connect it to ground. If I connect it to five volt, the value is supposed to be, what was it? 23 because it starts from zero. And then if I connect it to 3.3 volt, it's supposed to meet the value somewhere. Oh, cool. <laughs> Science is cool. Zero, 10, 23, zero, 5. Then what's the value? 3.5. Which is that So now we are going to use the case of problem. So as you see that the value is two to 10, 23. But what we can do is we learned set PWM5. But the problem is we cannot really use the value directly. Okay, you said so this tension is too high yeah. with the maximum value is too high. So we have to lower. And you can do more mathematical things divided global, you can do that too. But most of computer programming, hardware related computer program offer so called mapping function. So if you go to look at all these, there are a lot of kind of kind of uh, issue. A lot of kind of functions are here, and the probably operator not here. Sensing. We do, we do, we do, we set, 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 so go city. We do, we do, we do, we do, set. Oops. Button. Okay, map. Here's the one. So map value. So here's I'm explaining. So <clears throat> value supposed to be okay. So it's kind of a little bit too long, but let's do a long way. So map value minus one. But I set this one as a zero value. So this is the original number. Low is supposed to be zero. And high supposed to be 10, 23. And then I'll change this value to 0 to 255. And then I'll use this value to PWM5. So this one is relatively long. I just clean up. So this is not such a great way 
to use the Arduino code, however, very intuitive. Okay, so what it means that if the value of A0 is 1023, the output value to pin 5 is 255. If a value from A0 is 0, the value to the output pin 5 is 0. So this is direct mapping. What if, if you want to reverse it, I change this one to 55 and this high value is a zero. By doing so, when the value is 1023, it will be turned off and the value is zero, the LED brightness will be the maximum. And then this one will run really fast. So I'll just add, I just want to slow down. And would you check that if this is working? So actually this is not really a great way. So I would actually rather more programming way of organizing. So I would create data and then I will just use write and I simply do that set write to pin five. I just use read analog pin as write. So from now on bright represent the input value. And then I would set coming here. And then also I create one more variable called it mapped value, or I just called it n value. And then set m value as the result of map value. So it's kind of a little bit narrow, and it's more intuitive. Actually, these two things are the same thing. However, I just use variable. That's it. So again, here, bright is the variable to read the data from analog zero. Using this bright value, I create a map m value. And then actually, instead of using this, I just create an M value here. Uh, this one is basically, I just to clean up the value a little bit neatly. And then delete it. Delete it. And this one is just kind of, just looks, it's kind of faster to read it and understand it. And check if this one is working. You're not gonna. This is good. And actually, Arduino, basically, you learn almost everything you need to know to use Arduino. But actually, this is really the essence of more computation. More computation process is simply connecting input value to the output value and reconnect output to the input. And then, what is PID? Is connecting output value. In the middle of function, the continuously real time process, the correcting process. And then from now on, all other things are simply variations using all this basic thing. The first look at tonight. Thank you. 
<coughs> so when forever brightness is made zero, brightness zero is made, so you get that stuff together, but the value on the double. So it's working, it looks like it's good. So here LED is connected to pin five. So this one is connected, and this one is now let's try. Okay, so it's supposed to bright up. So let's just simply reconnect. A zero is zero. Zero. The bright is zero. And it's zero. Map the value is supposed to be map the value. <laughs> so map the value is actually nothing. So somewhere a problem I can hear. I would just say right. Right is zero. So actually zero means two fifty five. Oh, or yeah, maybe we can change this to two fifty five. Let's say leave analog zero. The value is supposed to be ten to three, and then map the it's something wrong here. Oh, that thing doesn't work. Right, it's coming. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 지금 map value 꼼수인 사람인데 지금 보면 map value를 더블 클릭하면 값이 안 나와요. 이게 지금 bright가 1013이고 1013이면 255로 매핑이 돼서 bright value가 255가 나와요. 그러니까 map value가 되지가 않아요. So what I'm going to do, I just kind of like to simply read the driver. Thank you. 
맵이 잘안 되는데. 자, 그럼 일단 넘어가고요. 맵이 잘안 됐을 때, 여러분들, 요거 어떻게 확인할 수 있냐면, so if you check, if you, if you take, you can also use this function. If you place this one and then change to right, you will see the M value here. So show bright variable. But then you see the bright is low. Ah, bright is very low. Ah, here is a low value. 이거를 이렇게 놓고 write value show variable and value 놓고 여기다 놓으면 여기 보면 <웃음> write는 로고 and value는 여기죠. 그러니까 지금 브라이트가 로우니까 이게 안 되는 것 같아요. 아, 브라이트를 어디선가 n a 0인데 read analog in a 0를 set bright. 요거 빼고 그냥 바로 볼까? 요거 하지 말고 바로 한번 더. 이렇게 하지 말고 n 밸류를 아까 그냥 요거 요약 안 하고 그냥 바로 해볼게요. 혹시나 요거 문제인가 싶어서 이거 set p w m pin 여기다 바로 넣고 so I just directly connect it without using any variable and then pin 5 then I'll just show I have to say pin five. Let's go. So, this is the first My value. Analog pin. What are you looking for? This is maybe not good. Okay. 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 I just want to explain motors. Uh, motors are divided into in a big category. There are three big categories. One thing is DC motors. So DC motor, you can apply the power and it's on off. If you reversely connect it, it will just kind of reverse way it just turn off. That's it. So DC motor is kind of a bit difficult to control. However, so DC motor you can control either clockwise or counterclockwise direction. And actually, if you change the voltage a little bit or current a little bit, you can control the speed of this motor slightly. But it's very, it's very difficult to control. What I mean is when I read the direction. Another type is solo motor and stepper motor. Solo motor is this kind of thing, stepper motor. And you can control this solo motor directly and actually there are two different types of solar motor. One is continuous solar motor, the other one is standard solar motor. Standard solar motor only rotates, depending on the solar motor specification, in general, small standard solar motor, it only rotates 0 to 180. So if you just simply offer PWM 0, it will go to 0. <coughs> PW 90, 90 degree. PW 180, 180 degree. Another type is known as continuous solar motor. Continuous solar motor actually rotates continuously. 
So the way how but then how do you control it? If you set theta value nine to this is start, theta value zero, it will rotate continuously with maximum speed in one way. Theta value one a, it will rotate the other way with maximum speed. So if you have just 90 degrees to zero, but actually it depends on the stop motor. Sometimes you may need to use 89 or 91 or 88 or 93. It depends on the how good your stop motor is. So depending on the quality, hopefully stop would be 90 or 89 or 91. And if you use 45, probably half speed in one direction, 135, half speed in another direction. That's how consistent the motor And stepper motors. Basically, all the CNC robot arm, those are our stepper motors. So this is DC motor. By switching this button, turning one way, and if you uh, offer full power, faster, lower. Faster, this is this motor. And if you reverse it, turn the other way, first speed, low speed, this is this motor. And then, so this motor simply controls the power of this. This is extremely analog. So this one is this car again, uh, standard level. 0, 90, 180, 1, <laughs> 0, 180, 90. <laughs> step motor is kind of like uh, uh, this one, all the machine parts, you are going to step on. This one is our own working on biophysical motor. Ah, so we need to discuss one thing. We want to understand. Let's try something <laughs> for your final point. But I have to, uh, as a team work together, so we have four students here. Let's make a machine. Any machine will be possible. For example, <laughs> Or a grind machine, or a switch button machine, anything would be fine. So let's make a machine using either sawhole or we probably you can only step. So stepper motor, you see that it has a so sawhole motor, so DC motor, you will have a two cable. Five volts or two, two volts or two. So this is this DC motor, and then this motor, where do you want to use this motor? Yeah, definitely driver. And four power. Where some of you use the highest high speed for both for DC motor as well. Some motors are good to have some good uh, high pro too, but then this motor only have a high pro when it's the maximum speed. Other than that, the pop is very good. Double motor, you can control it precisely <coughs> and one of the reasons is it can be faster. So that's why it knows where its location. So that's a good thing about that uh, step uh, sober motor. Actually, the there's a microcontroller inside. So there's actually a computer. So you can the computer and a sensor. So it knows where it is, so you can control the direct location. So actually many car handles. Or RC car handle or airplane's tail, it uses the solar. Doesn't have any benefit. However, simple motor is the most precise motor that you can control. And one of the reasons is that step, the inside structure of a stepper motor looks like this. So inside the stepper motor, it has a divided wire force. Now it is actually six. But now the rotor, so if there is a kind of four one, probably this one actually connected to here. So there's a magnet on, 
and this one off, so it will move here. So this one is probably uh, step size is four. So each step moves 90 degrees. If you increase the number of this stator, such as this, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this one, the step is 3360 divided by four, so 33, three, 3060 degrees. And then actually more precisely, what it can do is it can actually state if you precisely control it, instead of stepping each rotor, it can actually stay in the middle. So actually you can increase by controlling very delicately, you can actually twice the steps of its actual, actual physical rotor. So this is how stepper motor is working. And then what it means by is that more expensive stepper motor has actually more rotator or rotor and actually step is more precise. And then many current step motor that you have. So what you see is that in the, the uh, many specification, stepper motor is 1.8. It's just it's something very standard. And you, see, you, bet you can apply 0 0.9 degrees per moment. So, relatively, so then I say that imagine that the screen of this motor is roughly, let's say this one is roughly. One millimeter, which is one iteration, one complete iteration, it moves one millimeter. And then this one is 1.8 degree. So meaning that two hundred steps. So now let's imagine that one rotation move this one one millimeter. Meaning that we can control it. One millimeter, hundred steps. So zero point zero 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 five. This is that precisely. So meaning that even this step motor is precise enough to use any three D printer, CNC, and robotic thing. This one is actually good. One weakness of this one. Is if it is kind of like if something lightweight one is attached to that, this one is precise enough. However, something heavy things are attached, such as router drill bit, but this one may have problems. In that case, you can actually can buy bigger one. So you can have enough torque to do that. <coughs> so and then using special motor. You cannot really use directly by doing better. You need to use a stepper driver. Stepper driver, because Arduino is not good enough, what you will do is you first pick up the from here and connect stepper driver here. And then this one will be connected to stepper driver, and stepper driver kind of bridge this together and you can. That one will kind of talk about this step step. That's it for us. Um, oh, we're not hard enough. I was going to So let's continue. Uh, I'm going to try with that. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so step for the right. Okay, then I should go further. Yeah, Kromian. So, okay, let's kind of exercise uh, Sobo first. So, Sobo can be controlled directly. Oh, 
I just delete, I just want to clean up. Okay, so now to control Sobo, you can actually simply use this one, set Sobo pin angle, that's it. Ah, there's one more Sobo. So, one thing you need to know before there are two solvers here. Always a solvo has a three signal. And then you can always get to finish their wire by code. So solvo basically needs power. So you need Bible and brown. Normally the bright something red or red is related color supposed to be fivefold. Something whatever darkest color supposed to be connected to ground. And then something unusual, something yellow or white in this case is like a signal. And then this signal needs to be connected to pizza. So I'll give you again, so I'll give you this and you use that one. So here, let's do something interesting. So here we use value, okay, let's just for, first connect it and then see that this 90 or, okay, first of all, you need to check whether your solo motor is whether a standard or continuous, continuation. And in general, if it is continuation, it is listed as continuation. So that's continuation solo, these two are standard, however, Many manufacturers do not write whether it is continuous or not. So the way you can check it, <clears throat> many solar motors at least have a model number somewhere speak about it. So Google it and check whether your solar is standard or continuous. I have to say that solvents are these days are very cheap. The better side of it is that solvents are very <clears> easily <throat> broken. So if it doesn't work, just use another one. And actually, I have to say this one is even. I see a lot of kind of uh, failure rates. So you can check look that. So those blue ones are standard solvent motors. So it's supposed to be work like angle here.
저거만 하면 돼요. 셀 서브핀 나인 앵글에 이거밖에 없어요. That's it. <laughs> And also I just add one thing which is kind of it will be run too fast. I just slow down 0.1. That's it. Set zero pin. So connect. So I told you that a far goes red one goes to five volt. Round or black goes to ground, and then yellow or white goes to pin nine. And then check the value is changing when you change the angle degree of it. Do you think it's difficult to see connect up here to see whether a thing works? Then how do we update your code just for reconnect our video? Press green also in this connect. And then uh, I will reconnect it. <clears throat> so uh, it says I did not connect to build. So, 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 far, so, what? Okay, so, 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 And the check about their this is 90 and this one is 180. So now one thing we realize that what I see is that actually this one's reversed. 180 is here, zero is here. So meaning that I have to use it this way to match the angle. So this is 180, 90, so it's moved to 90. And this one is zero. Or if you want to use this direction. And then 180 is actually this way. What you have to do, you have to match it. 0 to 180, 180 to 0. This is how to solve this. So let's do, uh, so kind of you probably know how to solve this. And also, you need to do some collaboration thing. And then in many cases, as you said, there's a hole in the sphere, meaning that the rotation angle will be, the rotation angle is the same. But the rotation distance will be changed. And then normally this one is connected to wire array. And then as you see that zero is not really not really zero. And nine is not really an angle. One eight is not really an angle. So what happens is there is a kind of you probably see whether you see that there's some electric wire connected, but the wire is kind of like you can use screw to control the distance. So even your motor, you cannot really exactly line up 0, 9, 1, 8. That should be the work part 
So if you plug, you can by controlling the distance. So this is kind of you need to remember. Uh, so now we Let's use more interesting sensor. So now, so now let's use sensor. So sensor is probably the same thing with most. So you probably have to sensor. This one is the history of noise sensor or sound sensor. Sensor mm -hmm. are Basically, all sensors are variable resistors. Do you know what variable resistor is? So they change the resistance by kind of controlling. So what is the result of controlling resistance? What is actual result of controlling resistance? How could that be? It's not really correct. Yeah, both. Yeah. So, what do you go give me a second? You go to Oman, you go to Oman, Chongqi, Oman, Xinyu, Xiangyer, Xiangyer, Xinyer, Xinyer. So by changing, so if it is a direct connection, so you need to divide those things. So in electricity, there are two types of electrical connection. One is a serial connection. The other one is parallel. And in serial connection, so this one is like a serial connection. <coughs> and when a resistance is changed, actually current is the same, but voltage will be changed. When it is a parallel connection, when resistance is changed, voltage remains the same, the current will be changed. And many sensors is actually, is basically, sensor is actually serial connection, and it is known as voltage. Divide because voltage will change. So what happens? Some part. So many sensor has at least three connections. Why? Like thermal motor, five volts, ground, and one signal. And signal, what? What will be changed? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so Voltage will be changed. So what happened is the so input voltage is five volts. Output the other one is ground. So this is the five voltage is maintained. How in the middle, the this voltage will be somewhere zero or somewhere five volts. The voltage will be changed, right? Variable rates. So all many sensors you are going to you will see is at least three. So here, G is ground, plus is 5 volt, and A0 is the one voltage exchange. But interestingly, this one has another thing called the B0 in some microcontroller. What does that mean in this microcontroller? Convert A0 to this type of so this one has actually uh, has both analog. You can use both <coughs> analog output and digital output. But based on many sensor, only have three connections. And there's unusual case, but this one will cost you like depending on the device. But this one will cost like at least five dollars. So this one is kind of plus at that time. But you can even buy this sensor part. As to produce your some organ projects, so if you want to use one of the sensor, then so this one will cost much. So that day, you may just have to buy the sensor part only that will cost like 0 0.1 dollar. But as you see, that this has only two wires, <coughs> two connections. And then in case you have two connections, you have to make three connections. Using a resistor. So you have to invent it to a voltage device. But um, I'm not sure that no one will ask to do the invention. You can just buy this one. And it's so, what we are going to do is that you can just simply connect ground plus 
and n over zero, and n over n over zero to a zero to the right. And what we are going to do? So we are going to use Arduino, and then we are going to use n over pin a zero, and then we are going to simply connect it to servo pin nine angle as the read n over zero. So whatever voltage will come out from the sound sensor, it will be connected to solo mode. Actually, so again, the value will be zero to 1024, and we have to change to zero to 180. However, what we learned so far is that the map function doesn't really work in this Arduino. So I just kind of directly connected and let's just test it one more time. So connect it. So I will go down. We have a problem that you have limited number of five volts and ground. So I'll kind of show you how to use this. And as you see that. So minus and plus and minus plus, there is a line, meaning that they are internally connected horizontally. So wherever you connect using this one, they will be connected. But unlikely is the middle one. First of all, it is separate, meaning that this, this is one chunk, this is another chunk, and these are vertically connected. So if you want to approach in general, Way of using it, you connect five to plus or ground to minus either this one or on the other side. And then you connect somewhere. So try to use this one. And the general wisdom is that yeah, just you use, use it by the So it's kind of like that. So what it means is. Uh, this one is not really a sensitive one. So what does that mean by that? This one is kind of a slow tracing. Is that the, uh, this one senses the minor noise, and this one reacts to it. Yeah, you think just kind of blow it. Then <laughs> so you react to that, but actually the, it's not really so sensitive like that. So now, uh, so here is kind of like a, it's kind of difficult to use it. But for, so I'm kind of uh, explaining how to calibrate a sensor. One thing you need to do is we need to check a particular light sensor, sound sensor, or distance sensor. What you first need to do is to check about the input first. 
This is known as default situation. So what I do, I simply check read the analog image. So I just take it out more and check out what is the value. So it says it's zero. Now this is the read. So what I see is that this one sensing some minor value around here, and then it shoot out the value to that. So what I see is that so we need to check the default value. So write down the value of the minimum value and the maximum value that your sensor is shooting. It's kind of something you need to know about the sensor. So what is the so-called default value, meaning that when you do nothing, what kind of value is coming? So I didn't say anything. Would you write down the value at least? So calibration sometimes requires at least first 10 seconds or first minute. So 139. 87, 104, 148, 79, 146, 68, 76, 31. Well, so far, the maximum value we have is 146, and then we want some value is lower than 146, we don't want this motor to move. So what I have to observe that. So what I have to do that is we need to so-called filter out some values. So what I'm going to do, go to control if. So let's say you let's use a variable, the so data, and then make a variable. And then I just say uh, the value and okay. And then go to operator. So if, uh, and then also, uh, if the analog pin read analog, if the value is smaller than okay we need a value let's <clears> say 140 what i mean but if the read value uh, is larger than that okay i change this one i change this one if a read value is smaller than 140 just in case that i would say 150 if then create another variable so now we have to actually write down some program. So let's we'll say angle. Then angle and then set angle to 90. Well, I just set angle to zero. So it's always the default position. And if and else, uh, let's just use it other than that else. Let's use instead of just if, and then I just switch to this. So if a value is smaller than certain angle, I just ignore that. And then I would use, and then we also now, the second thing we need to know is what would be the maximum value of this sensor? So it's kind of tricky. However, what I have to do is okay. Uh, I, I, would show, I would use show angle. Uh, show, 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 show. A show variable. I would set this one show variable analog zero. B analog. Thank you. 
So actually, what I do, uh, so, so this one daily is coming, right? So, ah, so the only so. So what I do, I check the highest value. So what I what I did was, oh, you can do the same thing using algebra code too. So what I did here is that first of all, uh, data. First of all, I would set. Uh, I would set angle, but I would set this one as value. And then this value is read analog value. And then I show this variable value. So what I do is that the value will be shown here. So what I check is the value of default state and the value of so called activated state. And then so far here, when we check each one, when I blow it up, it's the value of about nine. And then the default, the if that even I think it is quiet. However, it still detects some noise, and the value was almost the value of one thing. So here's the problem happened. So instead of mapping, I would use this one. So, what I would do, so it's about 900, and I change to 180. So, I have to probably divide by five for safety. So, I set the angle to go to operator. I use this divide one, and then I use the raw value with analog input A divided by five. So I set this angle to whatever 900 divided by. And then I use this set sort of pin to angle and using this angle data. Then wait zero one second. So I put this one inside. It. So I kind of show how this one works. So again, I want to check the value. So I want I and I need to understand what what are the default values and what are the so-called active values. And then here, if the value is lower than one fifty, which is the default value, I set angle to zero. So it's whatever noise is detected, it stays still. And then if the angle is higher than 150, I divide by five. And that angle is used to rotate the solo motor. So probably even the, when the noisiest value, it will probably rotate 180. So let's check this one is working. So basically this one is over the scalp factor. So this one is connecting analog value to analog out. But we rarely use directness. We just use some filter out. And we sometimes we amplify. And this one is actually de-amplified. So we divide it by the number. But sometimes the value, it really depends on the factor. Sometimes the default value is like five or six. And then when the noise value coming in, still it's supposed to be like 30 or 40. 
then in the case we have to multiply by two or three by doing so you have to amplify the one. So try it. <laughs> Does it work? Actually, the, this one is not that it doesn't really work with the five equation, whether it will work with uh, so this one. The value is zero, the value is so this one. So this was 30, it makes sense. This is it? Yes. And then actually, 0 0.01 is actually a little bit related to less sensitive. So I just did make the limit here. Yeah. So actually, this is zero. What this is what will happen. So I have 0 0.1 second. So meaning that it will read every zero one second value. So meaning that even if I blow it out, that value is somewhere between zero point one second, it will be even more. So here, so actually this one makes each one's code a little bit dumb. So I just kind of check the value more frequently. But I would say I removed it, but I will not remove it. That is too fast. So this one is simply one millisecond. <clears throat> okay, so actually we have one other DC transfer. Now you're just be careful that this one has a propeller, so you have to okay. So when you work with DC motor, you can actually simply connect. Uh, one for plug and one for so you for in this case you may want to use a uh, female to male pin. So I have to connect there's a ground and basic base. And this one is PAB. So actually this one also has a microcontroller and actually if A is supposed to be supposed to be high or low, then probably it will work. Why would you connect round the connection board? So I do this motor green to ground and red to <clears throat> and then we need to offer a signal. So let's say if I connect it to five in one, how we know it will. So I think this one is probably so let's say that you have parts, how to use it? There are two in the microcontroller. So this is this motor. So it's supposed to rotate if you have plus and minus. So I just kind of directly connect it to the one here. But however, this one has a microcontroller, so it actually uses disparate signal to control. So probably this signal is not going back to the right direction. And probably you don't know how to use it. And many cases, when you buy any device, you probably don't know how to use it. So let's Google it and let's find out how to use it. And then this one is actually microcontroller. And it says, let's Google very quickly. So this one says, 
L9 110H. You suppose like this one is, uh, then if you search with Arduino, this one simply tells you how to use it. Arduino code for dual DC motor controller. So if you check about it, uh, and then actually, even though the packages are different, the microcontroller is the same thing. So this one, dual controller is simply using two DC motor. And then there's another one, L110 driver. Let's take a look at about it. It's a little bit also different, but it's covered. The, the way how it works, it will be the same. Input voltage is 2.512 volt. And PCB size is blah, blah, blah. And then let's kind of take a look at how does, how does it work. Oh, so it uses PWM. And then it probably, you can even control. So you work just like a solo motor. So now we have actually a solo motor. So I will do it instead of using, I will just connect it. So let's say that green is ground, yellow is PCC. And I will connect one. So this one, we have to put a solid motor, yellow is this one. But it's simply replace this one with this one. So green is green. And the something trickier thing is that this motor requires some time to really so if this one is motor is running, you can see that. So we probably need some, we need to calibrate this a little bit more. And the value is actually coming. Uh, so what is so we are zero is coming. So it looks like zero is like continuous motor in one direction. Would you change it to 90? So we supposed to change the values to 90 and zero and one. It looks like look like this one looks like continuous solution. So let's say that if you look at the code, uh, this one is I know this stuff at low high. PWM for Arduino code. Oh, actually, this one work like a high or low. So actually, it's if the in this case, what we have to do is this one. Instead of using solo pin, we can actually use set digital, set digital, set digital <coughs> pin nine. As actually, we, we need to set it as one more time. So let's say that then I have to say angle is low. And then set angle to instead of doing this, I will just set high. And then I just simply use angle here. Then actually this will use high angle. So this one is using this motor. And then one thing, another one you need to know
This one is known as the late. So what relay is that? This one is actually an electromagnetic switch. So let's say that you can control anything that working voltage is zero to five volts. The Arduino can directly control. However, if a device uses higher voltage than five volts, or actually the electric current that it comes out is very low. If you check about uh, Arduino's output current, Yeah, let's say that if we are using IP, it, it really all varies depending on the product. If we check up our specification, so here's the thing that output voltage, digital out, is actually, it, it's just that it is known that five volt, however, DC current for IO pin is 20 milliampere, which is very low compared to your laptop. The laptop requires to use this one is 19 volts and three amperes. So meaning that two on this laptop is about three ampere. What happens is if you use a large DC motor connected to Arduino, actually it will suck like one ampere or so. And actually, your computer thinks that there is a problem in this port, and you can just cut out the port. So that it will not work. So what you have to do is just to restart computer and then reconnect everything. So if your a motor or any device that works higher than five volts or higher than twenty milliampere, you need offer additional power to the device. And then you need to convert additional switching to this device. So this one is only for a digital output. So digital output for higher voltage than 5 volts or 20 millimeter. So what happened here is that. So what I would do, so this one is same only. So let's kind of remove that. So this one only also has three pins. And then what we will have. So I would say the green is ground and we should see and then this is control. And again, this one is actually this is switch turn it on and off depending on the disk output. So what I will do. So ground to ground. The green is ground. And then Yellow to one, and you see power is coming. And then I connect this one to pin 13. So, what we need to do, we just do basically, let's go back to here. All we have to do is forever, and let's do this something very simple. I said, I do you know, set this 13, was it 13? So I connect the certain high, then control, wait one second, and then Arduino set a digital pin, low, and then wait one second. So simply, this one is the same code, let's turn on LED on and on. And like the same way, if I hear the clicking sound, which is you go on and off. 
So here's what will happen. So the problem is, so this one is an electric switch that controlled by our region, plain on and off. So maybe you will find out any project that uses 220 volt network features, such as fluorescence or a transistor plant or humidifier to control the humidity in your room or heater that controls your room. Any actually real life application uses 220 volt. That cannot be controlled by our data. So we can actually bridge this one and connect any application, real life application. And the way how to use this one is actually creating a circuit. I strongly recommend not to really use any 220 volt application. Because 220 volt is extremely dangerous for you. So something lower words, lower words is mean by less than 15 volt is a safe for you. And then how to connect it? So here's actually I kind of explain it. So now you probably see that the solenoids look like this. And then it has a three connection point. So probably one and two and three, and there's a magnetic part here, and then it has a three pin wires. So I will just ignore this so that you know what to do. And then what happened is that you need to create an electric circuit. So let's say that somewhere here there is a problem with plus and minus or ground. So it doesn't really matter because this one is mechanically separated. It doesn't really care whether how long, how strong, or how high voltage you are connected. There is a specification this one here. So if the specification says that this is this device controlled by five volts of AC and then 10 ampere, 250 volt maximum, or if it is 15 ampere, it can maximum, you can connect it to 125 volt. Even you can connect it to is it 10 ampere, and 10 ampere 250 or 15 ampere 125 volt. Can you guess what how the control comes from? Okay, if you multiply it, that's actually the wattage. So what does that mean is that this metal part here has a maximum that much of wattage so for capacity. If you connect higher than that, probably it will die. But however, 10 ampere, 250 voltage is kind of cheaper. It actually is about 2,050 wattage. 2,000 wattage is actually for you know, cheaper is cheaper than 1,000. And hair dryer, any hair dryer is 700 watts. So it is quite safe for any application in your home. However, for industrial application, it may be still some, it may be exceed this capacity. So if you want to turn around your fan, air conditioner, heater, air dryer, even some small size cooking boner is safe. And microwave, Sometimes 1,000 watts is small size dormitory microwave, so it's okay to use it. However, some industrial microwave is kind of higher than this. So how do you do that? So okay, it doesn't really matter what voltage or what ampere, however, which is the maximum limit. So let's say that this one is 220 volts. Let's say this one is connected to power. What we will do is that imagine that there is electric wire is this one, and then this one is connected to wall outlet. And then one wire will be connected to, let's say it is a fan. And then it will, if it is connected, it will come up. Another line need to go here. And then the next one, 
is coming back to this. So what? No more time to you make it. Just come out in the middle. Take one wire out of here and another out of here, and then let it go through. So what you have to do is there will be two wires in that. And pick up, cut one wire and cut this one, one goes here and one goes here. So by doing so, this will be on and on. But then why there are three? So what you see is that the middle one is the central one. Depending on the valley on the other side, it is either connected this way or this way. So what you can do is two things. Default condition is this. So let's say if you want to turn it on all the time, if a signal is coming, you want to turn it off. So let's say that you are using humidifier. Humidifier needs to always run. But let's say you have a humidifying sensor. If a humidifier reaches a certain level, you want to turn it up to the humidifier. Then it is always on. If it is high, it is turned off. Heater. Heater also always turned on. If it's too hot, it's turned off. But air conditioner. It's probably before it says it always comes off. So it is connected this way. And then it is too hot, you will turn on the air conditioner. Temperature goes down, it turns off. So either you are kind of you can have an option. Either one is always on. And always when it's over a voltage, this part high, it switches to back to other direction. So you need to design this one in a way that Default connection is always on or sometimes off. Or before the situation is always on, and then when you are using it, it comes on. So use it kind of in a way that depending on the characteristics of the device. So this one is so called solar system. And actually, most many solenoid devices is inside the globe box of your uh, at home. There's electric box. What does it do? It's always connected. However, it has a sensor that detects electric leakage, and if there's a short, it just turns off. So that's also then in your home. But you are going to use this one for any device that uses power. Even though some of them, there's so many things to use on a separate cell coverage for that. So this one is, so it doesn't matter whether you're, you can just use voice sensor, sound sensor, sensor sensor, whatever it is, it could be analog input or digital input, it doesn't matter. Because you are algorithmically controlling. And then basically, or output is this, this is the on. So this is a straight control. The problem is, Analog output is problematic. That uses higher voltage than 5 volts, or that uses higher ampere than 10 kilometers. So, in that device, each device has a so called named driver. And driver is input is can be either like solenoid, 5 volt on and off, or Five volt variable resistor, and then the output also can be analog. So that one is actually each device requires different. For example, so that is known as so called the driver. So for example, let's say that uh, we if we use a DC motor that uses higher voltage, so something deep this motor that is higher voltage than higher current, you probably will find that DC motor and driver Arduino. Then you need to buy something lower version. Yeah, it look like this. Actually, I have it. So 
Uh, yes, when you come for a higher voltage, it will be even a large voltage regulator that uses the same thing as with the black one here. So what happened here is that these pins are either analog output or digital output pins. And here, the higher strong voltage comes through. And then here is actually, you can actually confer two decimals. So for each device, we'll have power control, which is a kind of importing a very strong power from the outside. And all of these pins are connected to Arduino. So it could be either, so this one has exactly four control. One of the four controls probably this is a PC output for one direction and another direction, so this is one disk and another disk. So four ways. And then here, so go to so I said you probably can learn this kind of driver here. So you will learn from this. If you are kind of a, actually, if you really go higher level, or let's say uh, uh sobo motor driver if something cheaper looks like this or if you're just gonna search it motor driver Would I want to check device map or something? You go by something okay. Something expensive one look like this. But this one is actually the same principle. Below side, you see that ground and VCC, and you see A minus A plus and B minus B plus. So this one is actually controlling whether high output voltage are coming. So this one, A minus A plus will be connected to another motor. And then B minus B plus connected to another motor. And then if you see pulse minus plus, direction minus plus, EMA minus plus, uh, EMA, EMA. EMA means enable. So it's kind of, it'll, it depends, okay, I have to explain. So uh, sometimes, very expensive motor have a break in that is inside. Because motor, you may want to turn it on, but sometimes you have to stop it. So enable means you want to activate a break on and off. And this one is actually analog or district. Here. And direction is you know clockwise counterclockwise. This is also for a distal out. And then here, first minus plus is how fast you want to control the motor. So basically, they are the same thing with Arduino. However, same thing with delay for more sophisticated version. So basically, any motor driver works like this. So simply, that motor will be controlled here using power control connected. However, you are going to control it using this or whatever. So from now, you can develop any. And this principle goes to all the robot nodes. They are the exactly the same. Come back. Uh, Here. This is cool. Um, as you see that here, uh, you probably see so you see their X and cell circuit Some of them are and some of them are because many of them are And then this one is connected to actually using this sequence. 
and it comes out if you come here. These are connected to this thing. And then this one will be connected to this many um, MD tractor, which is this picture. And then one of the examples is if you see this one. <coughs> Actually, uh, so uh, you may. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you come here, the reason that you think this was a This one is that this one is that the second motor, the second motor is connected to the second driver, the second driver is connected to the Arduino below, and this one is controlled by Arduino. So this Arduino will take this. Now you see that oh, and that's true. Or both of the two are once you run the article, they are coming. So you may you can make your own from now. Oh hi, we are oh, yeah, you step one. Can I, can I use the yeah, uh, and then probably you may want to use it from the other side of the room. There's a, do you want to use your laptop or do you not have a laptop? You can use it like this. So that's it for today. We cover almost everything related to our video. So as I explained at the beginning of this class, everything is basically all about Arduino analog. Input and output, output is the input to the output, and this is the connection. All these three is you can apply this everywhere in the world. So something more sophisticated one is actually called signal processing, which is even other than this type of five zero and the analog output zero to resolution. You can actually find control that signal itself. Uh, that is that doesn't cover it. That's something you're supposed to do. Electronic major. You will learn all the syllabus that you are for to master. <laughs> but not necessary without taking one semester of signal processing course. Just today's class is enough for you to develop any machine. You know, 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 so, who are the other? I'm a single person. 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 I'm a And then you can control your light. You can set your eye motion or your gesture. That's under that's a computer vision. You see this whole software. So you can turn the light off when you speak. And then another one, you can also connect it to computer vision. And if you don't move during the time. That you are not supposed to sleep, you have some health issues, some health issues. And if they say that you would uh, use the stay still more than 10 minutes without significant breathing, then you have problems. <laughs> then send the signal to the university warning system 
or you can make your light crazy. Maybe there is some stuff you don't want. Or you can connect it to alarm, for example. And then you can actually connect it to water filter, air filter, when it needs to be changed. So let's do something fun and crazy. I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> really famous one looks like a really sophisticated one. So I see it's really, uh, you don't know, so, so there's no such class in Korea at all. I rarely see any Korean connected to I never see any Korean. Zero. Then um, there was one high school student, but the message to MIT real lab. Actually, he developed every tool. So he drew, he used a pencil and he drew some pencil on a pen. And he was a pretty bad one. So do something fun and crazy. <laughs> Or such that you can actually draw a drawing machine, you can write down on your window. So think about it. Or you can you can make your own 3D printer too. So actually, uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't have nothing to do it, I recommend actually download it to build your own 3D shirt. So let's I don't think simple and easy and fun. <laughs> Something game that you can actually uh, find a the rock, scissor, and paper, and then the heat in the same magnitude to other <laughs> friends. Shooting game machine, or kind of like a shooting game that hits <laughs> any dangerous bugs or cats nearby your. Dormitory. You can also connect it to a uh, bug killer. And if there's bugs around, you can also connect to follow it and press it. You can the spray is very simple. You can have a 3D print of order, and there is a picture. You can you can use step of order. And there's another interesting one. Um, uh, during the corona time, it's kind of a difficult to find a drinking mate. But there's a robot <laughs> drink together and uh, kind of like will pour some liquor to your glass. So another tip is that yeah, so have fun. And then if you actually uh buy another suggestion, if you use uh this one, uh uh very good. If you go to this one is very helpful too. So if you have missed it, but if you go to Tinkercad. Uh, one great thing about Tinkercad is this one. So if you go to Tinkercad, I love them. Uh, so yeah, if you go to project, if you go to Tinkercad, 
you can use the same thing. However, something great thing about this one, let's say that you can switch to code. Uh, you, you can see code. Oh, where is it? Let me see. Uh, Tinkercad can generate an Arduino code from block code. Oh, yeah. So let's say that you have this Arduino. Now let's say that this one is code, but you can switch to block code to block and text. Mm -hmm. so if you generate your coding, you can switch to English later. If you have this coding, it will automatically generate Arduino code. So this can be, you can upload this one to Arduino and I can actually use Arduino IDE. So that's really one of the great things. All right, that's it for today. All right. Okay. So enjoy the rest of the week. We'll see you next Monday. Thanks. 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 Thanks.